Hey, welcome back everybody. This is part two of our review of the HLG Elite 360. In part one, we built the light and now we're going to go over the specs and do some testing. Okay, let's talk specs on this thing. The Elite 360 kit is rated as equivalent to a 600 watt HPS and offers a full spectrum customized with white, 630 nanometer red, and 660 nanometer deep red. It's suitable for both veg and flower and will veg a four foot by four foot space and flower a three foot by three foot or two foot by four foot space. System PPF efficacy is rated at 2.04 micromoles per joule with the waterproof covers on or 2.19 micromoles per joule without the covers. Total PPF output with the cover is 754 micromoles and without the cover is 810 micromoles. The white chips used on the Elite QB96 boards are LumenLED 5050s and the reds are Luminous SST10Rs for the red ones and SST10DRs for the deep reds. Ingress protection is rated at IP65, which means it's totally protected against dust and it's protected against low pressure water jets from any direction. The description of the light says that these clear covers make it waterproof, but not waterproof in the sense that you can dunk it in your bathtub and expect it to live. Water resistant might be a more apt term. Now for some testing. After running the light for an hour to let it heat up to a normal operating temperature, I checked the voltage and the current. I found the voltage sat around 106.9 volts and the current was at 2.75 amps, which means the total output power was 294 watts. The light pulled 328 watts from the wall, so it was running at 90% efficiency. The temperature of the heat sinks were 59 and 60 degrees Celsius. The case of the driver was between 51 and 52 degrees Celsius. For PPFD testing, I used my Apogee SQ500 sensor and a Fluke 287 multimeter. I took 45 measurements over my 2 foot by 4 foot grow tent space at heights of 24 inches from the light to the ground and 18 inches from the light to the ground, sealing the tent up for each measurement. On this chart, measurements taken at 24 inches are in blue and measurements at 18 inches are red. At 24 inches, PPFD peaked right in the center of the tent at 770 micromoles per meter squared per second. The average PPFD at the edge of the tent was 559. The four corners averaged 472 micromoles per meter squared per second. The average across all 45 measurements at 24 inches was 619 micromoles per meter squared per second. At 18 inches, PPFD peaked beneath each light rather than in the center at a high of 900 micromoles per meter squared per second. The outer edge averaged 589 micromoles and the corners averaged 505 micromoles. The average across all 45 measurements at 18 inches was 670 micromoles per meter squared per second. This light is priced very similarly to HLG's 260 watt kits that utilize two of the QB288 boards that everybody's familiar with. At the time of writing this review, the Elite 360 was $20 more expensive than the 260 watt QBXL kit, which is intended for a 2 foot by 4 foot flower space, and about $100 cheaper than the 320 watt XL QB kit, which uses a Meanwell 320 watt driver and three QB288s. At this price point, it seems like HLG's intent was to create a light that's high output and puts up strong numbers in a 2x4, but doesn't necessarily focus too much on efficiency. If you compare the efficiency of the Elite 360 without the covers at 2.19 micromoles per joule to the 320 watt QBXL kit at 2.63 micromoles per joule, there's a considerable gap, but 100 bucks is 100 bucks. Essentially, if you go the Elite 360 route, you're getting 17% less efficiency if you run it without covers and 22% less if you use the covers, but you're also paying 20% less, so you'll have to prioritize what's more important to you. The things I like most about this light are the custom spectrum HLG has come up with for it, and the ability to run the light with additional water resistance or to just go without if it's not needed. It was also very easy to build and required only basic tools. My main complaint was going to be the fact that no potentiometer was included, but after speaking to Amit, he mentioned that they'd be including pots in all kits going forward. Maybe they'll also be so kind to toss a few more zip ties into the kit as well, just because a single zip tie doesn't leave much room for error, and it's always nice to be able to dress your cable with a little bit of flexibility. Like all the DIY HLG stuff, there were no instructions to follow to build the kit, but I didn't find it difficult to figure it out and got it together pretty damn quickly. All in all, this thing does really well in a 2x4 and is a great option for the grower who's more concerned about budget and less concerned about maximizing efficiency. As always, thanks for watching and please consider subscribing if you're looking for more DIY LED grow light content 
And check out our forum too at ledgardener.com forum to chat with other LED nuts about your build. See ya.